you want to be a creator. That is awesome. All right, maybe you want to create things for yourself or just for advertising or maybe you want to write books. Maybe you want to create things for your students like printables or worksheets, that kind of thing. Maybe you want to create for other teachers. Well, this video is for you. I am going to show you all kinds of programs and um, stuff <laughs> that I use every day in my journey of being a creator. And this is all free advice. I'm not asking you for anything, but if you enjoy it, please do click that little subscribe button. It helps me know that my content is helping you and that you want more of it, okay? Feel free to post in the comments any questions you might have because I can totally cover them in our Facebook group. If you haven't joined that, we have an awesome little Facebook group. It's called Preschool Music and Piano Teacher freebies or something like that. <laughs> I'll post it here in just a sec once I edit the video. But yeah, make sure you join that group. Um, everything is free in the group. On Mondays, we do open it up to small shop creators to post items that they sell because we can't give away everything for free. We have to make a living, right? Okay, so anyways, in this video, I'm going to share my journey as an author and a content creator and I am going to give you my top tips on how you can get started in this rewarding, rewarding career. <laughs> All right, so whether you're making um, creative printing, whether you are creating printable resources or writing a book, there are certain steps that you are going to need to take as a creator with an audience. You want them to follow you and gobble up all of your stuff because you don't want to make all this stuff that they don't want. You need to know what they are consuming so that you know what to create. I've been teaching music lessons for 25 years. Oh boy, I sound old now. <laughs> I'm not as old as I feel. No, I'm not as old as I look. No, I'm not as old as my number. <laughs> This job keeps me young, doesn't it? All right, so keep in mind, I have been using a lot of these programs for over a year because COVID has allowed me to take all that content that I kept over tw my 25 years of teaching and like put in little binders and organized and just saved forever. And then COVID came and I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Um, yeah, I have all this stuff over here. Why don't I look and see how I can make it work for me, right? So that's what I did. That's how I have all this stuff. And I have it right at my fingertips because I have a few little tools that I'm going to share with you at the end of the video. So make sure that you stay all the way to the end. I'm going to be talking and going through for a few minutes on each little program or um, you know resource that I use so that you can get a little sense of each thing because I'm not sure what exactly you're creating but I want this video to be for everyone and who knows maybe you'll see something on there that really inspires you to want to create other items than you never even thought of. That's what I love to do. I love to inspire teachers to learn and learn from each other. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Grab some paper and a pen. We are going to be writing things down because you don't want to forget all this information. You only want to watch this video once. Well, if you want to watch it five times, that is good too for me. <laughs> all right, let's get started. <laughs> Let me just over you, give you an overview of the programs that we're going to talk about, okay? We're going to talk about Canva, we're going to talk about NoteFlight, Affinity Publisher, PowerDirector 18, Google Slides, Google Forms, and Asana. Okay, so there's a lot, oh yeah, and Google Sheets too. <laughs> there's a lot of programs that we're going to talk about. I wanted to mention them first so you can kind of think about what's coming next but I have posted in the video a little headlines so you can see each one before it comes up so you can follow along on your PC, okay? Or your or your phone, but you'll be watching it on your phone, so you kind of want to go on the PC. So grab that pen, let's get started. Okay, so my most favorite program for creating is Canva. If you don't have a membership for this already, you can sign up for a free account. But when you sign up for a free account, you don't get to uh, select as many visuals and that sort of thing. Um, you won't have access to as many templates. 
Um, you can see up at the top of the screen here, there's lots of different templates to make all kinds of different things. So I'm just going to show you, I have the paid version and I've had this for about two or three years now. I think it's around $13 US a month, but it is money well spent. So if you look in my folder, here are all of my designs. Um, yeah, I make everything in here from my advertising to printables. Oh look, this is the one that I'm trying to get out today. You guys are going to love that one. Um, and I make my thumbnails for my YouTube videos, um, all kinds of worksheets. Uh, like I said, thumbnails, like that's probably what I spend the most time with if it's not um, just for making all the little videos. Um, you know, I should probably show you, let's click you into one of these big um, packages here. So when I design the slides, it shows it all on the bottom here. Going through each one, and you can save these as separate little files. If you go to download, you can save them as a video, and it will automatically put each slide at a certain second. You can change the rate, um, or you can just save a single file in many different types, like a PNG. That's what you're going to use the most. Um, I've, I've been working with these um, printables and um, creating graphics and stuff for years and years, so I probably have a lot more knowledge than most um, teachers do. Um, that would be a whole other lesson. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Canva, well, of course, there's a million YouTube videos you can watch, but I can totally make a video about that. If there's enough people interested, I can show you from a music teacher's perspective. But what I love about Canva is look at all this space. Like, I have so much stuff on here, guys. I've been using this for years, as I said, and I can go back. Maybe there was like a thumbnail or a picture from forever ago. Like, those are from this summer, last summer. Um, so much stuff. I also create my book mock-ups in here so before I'm ready to go into my actual publishing software. So what I mean by that is <laughs> I'm recording this in a couple different segments so please forgive me if I mention this later. This let's just say was a total mock-up of one of my books that I was going to make. I didn't have all of my um, graphics made by my, my um, Illustrator, Corinne. So I just use mock um, pictures from stock pictures from Canva to make everything. Of course, all these things changed a little bit. Um, if you've seen my real books, you'll know that it doesn't look quite like this, but very similar. It really helps me to develop my book over a period of time. So probably it takes me a few months to mock it up with some basic visual stuff and then I get my creator I say these are the clips that I need you need to create them for me <laughs> and then she does she'll have an idea of my vision by looking at this stuff so that's pretty cool this is the first book um, yeah that's kind of neat to be able to look back on that so yeah years and years of stuff Canva is awesome okay next we're gonna head over to note flight All right, so here we are with the Note Flight software. This is a software for making music. So I like this one because really the price is around $50 US per year, or you can actually purchase it and own it. I think it's like $300 per um, for the full purchase price and you own it for the lifetime. But if you renew your subscription, I notice on Black Friday every year it's half price. So that's what I've been doing. I've been waiting until it goes on sale and so I think it works out to about $25 a year. So that's super cool. All right, so I want to just show you quickly um, how I make my little songs for the backgrounds of my videos. So of course there's all these things. If you've ever used a note um, a composing software, it's pretty standard. It works like most things. Um, and of course, there's lots of different sounds that you can use. Let's just play it. Oh, yeah. You can hear it a little bit, I guess. 
using two different devices, screen recording with Loom and the audio on my phone because my PC does not have a microphone or a camera. So anyways, you can transpose with this, you can do all kinds of stuff, you can download the music in MP3 files or WAV files, whatever it is that you need for the quality of whatever you're using. I like this software a lot and I use it a lot. So there we are with that one. The next one that I use a lot, now this is Affinity Publisher. Um, actually, I'm not sure if I can open it up just from here because it's actually onto my PC. What I will do, I uh, will open it on my other screen here and then I can drag it over and show you. So Affinity Publisher, this is the plan. Oh, look, it's on sale right now if you wanted. Um, I really only use this for making my own books. Um, I don't I don't really use it for anything else. Okay, I'm just going to show you. So right now, um, I am working on a translation for Chugga Chugga Woo Woo. And I have to go through and make a few changes. But you can see how I lay everything out of my books. And you can clearly see lots of margins and yeah you can't create books without this software but this software isn't absolutely perfect most people need an adobe program to easily upload your books into kdp and ingram but i have a girl who makes my files which saves me time um yeah chugga chugga woo woo has a train game super fun um, so yeah, Affinity, if you're writing books, if that's your plan, you're going to want to start off with some sort of software. So if you want more advice or information on this program, let me know. I hope that you saw that in the screen. All right, so let's see. What else do we have? Power Director 18. Full mode Power Director 18. This is my video editing software. So you will see. Here it comes. So here I am on my screen. Let's look at one of my most recent projects. Tweets, note of the day, game only. Let's do that. Yes, I want to sync all the stuff. So here's where I drop all of my stuff in my content, my pictures, my little video clips, and they go in here. And then of course you go through and you put all the timing. There's Tweet. He's got um, a mask in. I can't see everything on here. Oh, there we go. So you see multiple track recording. Um, there's, so there's just Tweet right there. He's masking so I can move him around if I wanted to. This software is really amazing. There's lots of video editing softwares out there. Find the one that works for you and that fits in your price range. <laughs> um, they're very time consuming. This little three minute video took me five hours of sitting down and getting everything in the right spot. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you how I use my PowerDirector 18. Now, just a reminder, this software is for PC. If you have a Mac, um, I don't believe they have a power director for that. You probably want to use something else. If you are just recording videos on your phone, you're going to probably prefer something on your phone. Um, but I prefer the PC version because I have two monitors at home and it's really great for multitasking. Um, and just you have way more control over using a mouse versus using your fingers on your phone or your tablet. There's just way more options for mixing sound and stuff in. If you plan on doing videos like this, I really recommend you work from a PC or a Mac. I don't have any Apple products. Even my phone is Android. Everything I have is Android based. So if you have Android, I can definitely help you out. If you have Apple products, um, especially the, the Mac computer, I can't help you out. I've never had them before. But okay, so let's continue on. So here I am. I am going to show you my PowerDirector 18 and how I'm going to make this video that um, I am recording for you right now. So here we are. Um, first of all, I've already saved my videos that I made in Loom and I downloaded them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each one and drop it into my video. Oh, isn't that weird? I've never had this happen before. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. I was thinking if it wasn't working, but it's working. Okay. So there's one clip. There's two clips. 
and moving over, following to the end. There's three clips. I have four clips because uh, the software would only let me do five minutes of recording of screen time. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Oh, I hope these are in the right order. If not, I'll have to go back. All right, and then what I would do is I need to download my audio. Now, I haven't done that yet, so I would download my audio off of my phone. I email it to myself, and then I download the link. I'll just show you this one because this is the same type of file in M4A, and then I would just put it in there. Obviously, that's not the right one, but that's okay. So as you can see, I have something in here with audio, and now I'm going to play... And so you can see here is my little video of me showing you how to work with Canva. Um, this wouldn't be music. This would be me talking like you've seen in the video. But anyhow, I just wanted to show you how to do that. Um, and then when you go through and you edit, it's pretty easy. So say maybe there's something in here I don't like. I'm just going to go click here and say I'm going to click here. And then I can just go and I can delete this, remove and leave gap, or remove and fill the gap. So it moves everything, all of the little things that I have dropped down into here, the files, it will move it all over to the screen. So there you are. Um, that is how I use my Power Director. You need a really powerful computer to run all these different types of softwares, especially if you're doing a lot of things all at once. So if you don't have a powerful computer, even if you have a laptop, a laptop might not be strong enough. You're going to hear that fan going shh all day long <laughs> and it will be super annoying <laughs> so invest in a strong pc if you're going to be doing video stuff all right so yeah i hope this is helpful if you want more tips let me know um, and maybe we can set something up um, some sort of live demo or something like that okay and next comes google slides so with google slides um, we can have this for free guys uh, this is not my favorite it works i make these little slideshows if you've seen these on my website it's pretty cool because you can uh, you can upload all these links and publish to the web there it is that's what i was saying okay and then it gives you this um address here the HTML code where you can copy and you can paste this into your website and you can post it. Why don't I just show you how it's posted on my website? That might make better sense. So tinytinkles.com, here we go. Um, little learning videos is where I have this on my site. No, that's not right. Game player, video player, that's the one. There we are. So here is the little slide. See, you can toggle through to each of these pages. This is kind of nice because then you can send your students to your website and they can play all these little games and it's very easy for them. It works on a tablet, it works on a phone. So they just click on whichever video they want to play and it takes you right to the, um, we're not volume done. It takes you right to the YouTube video so you're still getting your links, um, not your links, you're still getting your views even when people are playing it, uh, but yet it gives kids an easier access to be able to play the videos. So I think it's super duper cool. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, Google Slides, let's just head back to the Google Slides because I want to show you a little bit more about the Google Slides and how they work. So here we are, we're going to Google Slides, and let's get rid of that one in the background. Okay, so here we are. You can also, there's a really cool Facebook group, if you haven't seen it, it's called Google Slides for Piano Teacher. Joanne Kaganowski, I can't even remember how you pronounce her last name. She is awesome, very helpful, and provides all kinds of tips as to how to customize a, a lot of these little downloadable things. So let's just look. This is a board game that somebody created and made available for you to customize. I haven't even touched this, but I saved this for later because I think it's going to be a really cool resource for my students. Um, but again, these things take lots of time and they take lots of time to learn <laughs> and you're going to make a lot of mistakes and that's okay but that's the only way um this one's kind of nice actually i didn't realize it has instructions on how to do everything so that's really super cool maybe i might look at that one and create something over the next couple of weeks for that i've done some um little 
um, rooms and stuff. Where is a room that I've done? Oh, I don't seem to have one saved on here. Oh, I did a presentation here with my Yummy in My Tummy book, and I uploaded everything in the background so I could impose myself in Zoom here, and I could move myself around. You can check that out in the video, but it worked out pretty cool, I think. But um, again, I don't have a green screen, and I'd really love to have a green screen. But I want to just show you this really quickly of how it worked, how I use Google Slides to make that video. Um, this is my YouTube creator thing where I can go inside YouTube and do all my stuff. Oh, here it is right here. Let's just show you real quick. I've got um, to play it right here. Make it full screen for you. There we go. So here I am. As you can see, Zoom isn't perfect, but actually I think this works a lot better than what I've been doing. I could save myself a lot of time with my little videos with Tweet. If I use this again, I'll have to revisit. See, it's all a process about learning. You're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way, but you have to. And part of being a creator is just going ahead and just do it. Most people never do anything because, never achieve anything because they don't sit down and do it. You just got to try just try um, yeah so anyhow those are my top um, my top ones my top programs for creating stuff okay so now I'm going to talk about organizational software I'm just learning this one this is taking me a little while Asana is a really cool useful program and I use the free version. Maybe at one point I will update to something else. But um, I think that you're going to find this super helpful. So here I have my, um, this is like a planner. And I can move things around. Actually, let's just show you on the board here. I can move all kinds of things around on this. I have tips here. Where can I post? Which um, I've just set this up this week. So daily things just to make things easier for me to access every day and know what I need to do today so I can plan out my day better. Here's some ideas for videos for teachers, videos for kids, so I can know ahead of time to plan all my YouTube videos, printable ideas. These are some things that when I'm not so busy, I'm going to go ahead and jump on board. And I thought of this last night. One of these things that I'm going to put in here is how much time I'm going to estimate each task is going to take. So maybe one day I only have 30 minutes, and so then I'm going to go ahead in 30 minutes and create something. Um, but maybe one day I have three hours. Well, then I can look for something that's going to take three hours and make really good use of my time. Um, ideas for books, new song ideas, all kinds of stuff. And then I can keep my ideas all at my fingertips and I don't forget anything. So I think that Asana is a really cool resource to be able to do. Um, hello baby, well this is my program, the curriculum I'm trying to make for baby classes. Um, I haven't visited this since June of last year because I've been busy creating other stuff. But I have this almost ready with a book published to go. If you want, if you're interested in finding out how to teach baby classes and hey, you really want to read this book that I'm trying to put together, hey, tell me <laughs> because it's the only way that I'm going to prioritize and put it at the top of my list. If I know somebody is interested in gobbling this content up, I will jump on board and get it done. Um, but anyhow, those are all my favorite um, programs. Um, yeah, I think that you're going to find them very helpful from, from Panva to NoteFlight to Affinity Publisher, PowerDirector 18, Google Slides. Oh yes, Google Forms. Google Forms. I haven't shown you that one. Google Forms. It's funny how when you're recording, you can't type very fast. <laughs> so I just go to go Google Forms. Oh my gosh, this is such a time-saving thing. So when I do a launch team for my book, what I do is I make a Google Sheet. And here we are with a Google Sheet. And it's 
um, this is not a sheet, this is a form that people fill out and sign up to be on my launch team. So I put these out and then it collects all the auto responses with all of the emails so that I can send all my information out to the correct people who asked for it and who want it. So that's really good. These sheets are also really good for registering students because you can download the HTML codes and put them on your website and provide a link. People just click on a pretty box and then it takes them to this form. So here we go. This is a sign up form for my classes with my studio policy attached and everybody has to read it and I'm sorry I should scroll. I'm going so fast. Um, please type your name to accept the studio policy. Your classes will not be reserved if this is left blank. Wow, what keywords, right? All right, and then of course the auto responses, you can put them in a spreadsheet and you can copy and paste. Woo, look at all that green. Um, yeah, so that's super cool. Very, very cool. Google Forms. Lots of stuff use it for so much. Piano lesson appointment form, that's pretty cool. Um, registration for all my form uh, classes, I would make a form for these, but yeah. So there you have it, all my stuff, all my awesome programs that I recommend you check out and um, try the free versions of. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That was a lot of information. I know it's overwhelming. If you want any tips on any of the programs, please comment below, either in our Facebook group or just comment in the YouTube comments. They are open for you and I will respond to each one of you, okay? Um, I'm here to want empower you. I want to inspire you. I also need more creators in my Facebook group to be posting free material. So please try it out. You've got nothing to lose. You just, well, maybe time, <laughs> a lot of time, but it's fun. It's really rewarding to see your creations out in the world being used by other students and other teachers. And um, I mean, if I didn't have all the inspiration of all the different mentors that I've worked with, there's no way that I would be where I am right now. I wouldn't be on YouTube. I wouldn't have published books. Um, I wouldn't have all of you guys watching me. If it wasn't for all the people who believed in me, I wouldn't be here right now. And so thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for encouraging me. And I believe in you. So get started on your creator journey today. <laughs>